What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Fed Dead Redemption, uh, number 35. So, you know, second, third edition, I guess, of our uh, revamped one. Robert O'Neill, Oracle Wrestling, here to uh, break down the past week in the World Wrestling Federation. Oracle, how you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, as usual with me in the last three weeks, I'll probably, uh, uh, hopefully not, I will probably vanish and disappear and freeze and Bobby will have to carry the carry the load for about 10 or 15 seconds, but uh, <laughs> hopefully that won't happen. Um, other than that, uh, I'm doing pretty well. Uh, <clears throat> I'll jump right in it and say that I'm very glad that SmackDown was such a great show mm. because since Elimination Chamber, I thought they had four really weak episodes or three or four really weak episodes of TV. Yeah. Um, and they, and they finally got one right. Uh, and it was a really, really good show. Um, and, and, and I'm glad to see that I, in some ways, I think it might've been a response to some of the criticism online. Yeah. yeah I mean, honestly, we can just kind of get right into it. Cause like we were DMing a little bit before raw and, you know, the matches were coming out and we're like, Oh, it sounds like a pretty good show. You know, bloodline street profits, you know, Cody and Gable. And then, those are both good, and then everything after that kind of fell flat a little bit until, you know, the main event, which has been a bit uh, divisive, which we'll get into shortly. But, yeah, you know, I think Raw kind of fell off a little bit, but SmackDown kind of maintained that level throughout and I think really set the table for a lot of stuff uh, going forward the next few weeks, which is definitely what you want to see. Absolutely, yeah. It was it was just it was a great show, man. I mean, you know, we, we got our Roman-Cody confrontation, which we'll talk about yeah. big time here, and, and – uh, some some good matches, some some really good you know decent setups for for Mania down the line. I and, and, and you know it was it was a uh, hot crowd, so I, I thought it was a really really strong show. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and and it also left you wanting to see next week. You know, with you know with the Bloodline stuff. So it was it was by far the best episode of TV we've seen since Elimination Chamber, and 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 since uh, you and I have started this revamp show. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so we can get into it. Uh, let's start with the women's tag titles. Uh, Becky and Lita picked up the win over Damage Control to win the belts. Um, I'm not sure really something that we were expecting. I know we talked about it a little bit last week in the preview, but uh, yeah, they switched the titles. It looks like, you know, Trish is finally involved. Um, so I guess my question for you is now that it's all laid out like this, and I know we speculated a little bit in the past, but what do you think comes next from here? Are we doing like two separate matches or is damage control going to kind of not be involved or, you know, what, what do you think they're doing here? It's a tough, it's a tough, cause like I, I've been, I've been stuck on that trios match for so long, but mm -hmm. you know, now with Becky and Lita as the tag champs, I'm just not so sure. Um, you know, it's one of those deals where they, you know, the, with two nights, they're going to want to get a bunch of people on the show. Yeah. Um, and and you've made a good point about pointing out you don't really want Becky and Ronda in a tag title match, but that might be the case. Yeah, it, it kind of seems like that's the path they're going to take And it's like, um, you know, a lot of people seem to think this Bailey Trish thing is is the, is the direction. I don't mm. know. I think the trios match makes the most sense. Um, I think I think it would probably be the uh, probably be the most like the highest quality. Although I think Bailey Trish would be good. Yeah, um, I agree. The 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 trios match makes the most sense, but it seems like they're going to split it here. Um, you know, we have obviously a month to go before you know you know before we'll know for sure. Um, but it but it does seem like they're going to do a split. The question is, who the heck, you know. Are they going to do a gauntlet? Are they going to do a four-way tag? You know, is it going to be Bailey and Trish? Is Trish just going to be in, some, you know, and, and Lita in Becky's corner? Like, you know, what's you know, what's the deal? Yeah, yeah. At this point, I think they're going to do Bailey and Trish, and then probably you know, tag team turmoil night one. You have Ron and Shayna win, and then they face Becky and Lita on night two, which mm -hmm. I know we've talked about a little bit in the past couple of weeks. And I mean, that's that's fine. Like that gets more people on the card, obviously. And I think Ron and Shayna as a tag team, there's really a good amount there like i feel like ronda's motivated to do it and that's kind of been the problem since she came back she hasn't really felt like she's been motivated to do this but she's wanted to work with Shayna for a while and uh you know they want to bring those belts kind of back up and elevated so you might as well go with it mm -hmm. right and, and, and the thing is is they could they could do the trios tag and let them go like and and have like limited Bailey Trish interactions, and they could do the trios tag for 15, 20 minutes on a raw, 
mm. week or two leading up to the show if they don't do that. I just I I mean I just I won't lie. I keep hung up on this on the six you know on the six women tag, but I I really do want to see it. I think it's an interesting matchup. Yeah, I think it'd be a lot of but, fun. Um, but uh... yeah, I, I think if I think if they don't do it, if they don't do it on Mania. They'll do it before, or they'll do it like the night after on the Raw after. Mm-hmm. So, um, Cody says, "Could this be where you bring up Katana and Caden?" I don't know that I'd put them in the you know tag team turmoil or whatever just to lose. Um, I think it'd be a good spot mm-hmm. for them, but I think it's more likely to just bring them up, you know, a Raw or SmackDown after Mania instead. Um, but they definitely seem to be coming up soon. Yeah, yeah, they do, and 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 they should. Um, if <sighs> The, the women's tag division is always going to be up and down. Mm-hmm. Whether Triple H or Vince are in charge, it's always going to be that way. Um, but uh, they 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 need to move up, and you know they're 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 a very solid tag team, and I'm I'm you know interested to see what they can do when they move up. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kirby says, "What are we getting Otis against Cody Rhodes? I'm ready for it, man. I thought Gable and Cody was one of the best uh, Raw matches in." Probably in about a month or so. Like that match ruled. Um, I hope they run it back on a bigger stage at some point in the summer. Um, Because it feels like if Otis is going to go with maximum male models, Gable's due for a push. And he's been very good for the past year, so he's due for a push anyway. Um, But yeah, Otis and Cody would be a lot of fun. They should run that tomorrow, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think I think you know uh, I was I was thinking the same thing. They could they could probably do that match tomorrow. Yeah. Um I, I do want to go back and, and talk a little bit about the, the uh the women's title change again. Um yeah. my biggest issue with all this is that lead is just bad in the ring. <laughs> yeah, I mean there's really there's no nice way to put it. She didn't look good in there. Uh she didn't really look good against Becky last year. Now, the thing is with all this, she was never actually like good. No. So like that's part of it. Yeah, and I think you know a handful of people watching now probably didn't watch her in you know 2004 whenever she was still having these matches where like, you know she's not actually that good. But it's it's striking now because everything's so polished and produced that when mm. someone's bad, it really sticks out. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 just I could definitely see that becoming a problem as we as we approach and 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 you know and actually in Mania itself is her is her lack of. Um, quality uh kind of getting yeah. in the way of things um i i just the idea of i don't know becky and lena versus ronda and shane is like a star power type deal but like mm-hmm. the actual quality of the match is you know um yeah. somewhat disconcerting but yeah um, it's um it's more like an old school wrestlemania match where you're just taking four stars and just you know hoping it works out just to have star power <laughs> right right yeah, um, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. It's, just, it's just my one big criticism more than anything is she's just very bad. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, then the other big thing from Raw, it looks like Brock and Omos is official now. Um, I honestly don't think they're going to yeah. do anything else with it until yeah. Mania. Um, I don't know, man. Like, everyone was like, oh, this is the best you can do with Brock. And I agree. It's obviously not. But it's not going to be his worst match. It's not going to be the worst match on the card. Like... Everyone's going a little overboard with it. They're going to keep it, you know, five or six minutes. They're going to, you know, Brock's going to get him up for the F5. That's going to be cool. Omos might get him up for the, uh, you know, military press. And just do big moves. It'll be fine. I mean, obviously you'd like to have Omos on TV a little bit more to uh, get ready for something like this. Maybe that's the plan. They'll have him uh, just run through some people in the next few weeks. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely more concerned about Lashley and Bray than I am about Brock and Omos. I actually think both matches could be good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Lashley is less inclined to uh, get stuck on a formula and a sprint than Brock is. And I think that Brock and Omos is an interesting matchup because Omos, the size difference, mm-hmm. I don't think we can just have a suplex city type match. Yeah, I think Brock's going to be forced to have to work outside his formula. Mm-hmm. So I think both matches are actually a little bit more interesting in terms of in ring. 
Um, Brock and Moss actually quite an interesting match. I've been convinced by some by some people who've been talking about it that I think, you know, he 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 can't do his typical suplex city stuff, which gets over, you know. But I, it's just boring, right. it's the same stuff. Um, he's going to have to try to make things a little bit more interesting, even if it is just him trying to work his way into hitting a suplex, right? Like mm-hmm. that's much more interesting than him just suplexing away. Yeah. Like exactly. it's just, it's just, it's just, it's, it's almost naturally going to be more interesting because of that. Um, mm-hmm. The question is who you have win. you know, if, if the rumors are true that, that, that Brock is done after this, who do you have win the match? Um, I, I, I still find it hard to believe whether he's leaving or not, that Brock's going to lay down for Omos. Yeah. Cause then, I mean, there's only so much you can do with Omos after mm-hmm. that. Like he's not going to be world champion. He's not going to be probably like us champion. Like, so if he beats Brock, it's just what's the point, you know? Mm-hmm. Like if Brock's leaving, yeah, he should put a guy over. That's probably why he should have, uh, you know, agreed to do this with someone else. That's where it all kind of see. That's like don't have an access. Like it's very clear that Brock has turned down multiple pitches, and uh, now we're here. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you could say what you want if Vince was involved or whatever. I don't think Vince was necessarily involved in like, we need this match to happen. I think Vince's involvement might have been Brock called him and was just like, hey, you know, <laughs> yeah, is yeah, this a guy that I should work, you know? Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting. I'm glad it's not Brock and Bray because that would be a mess. I do actually think Lashley could get a better match out of Bray than mm-hmm. even Agreed. Brock could, but the Lashley and Bray stuff so far has not been great. No, I didn't hate the brawl on SmackDown, but I mean, it wasn't good. Do you know what I mean? Like it was yeah. the brawling itself was fine. It's just you know with with Bray and I guess Bo and a mask, whatever. But um, <laughs> like yeah. I, I think I think Bobby and Bray can have a really fun five minute match where they just do a bunch of muscle fat guy stuff. Mm-hmm. Like if if they just. Okay, I know it's a totally different thing because Finn Balor is actually a good worker. But do you remember the sprint Bobby and, and Finn had at WrestleMania 35? Yes, it was there. World? Yep. And they were they were like semi main event. They had like the crowd had already been dead all night, and they mm-hmm. had a better crowd reaction than the women's triple threat. Yeah, they did because they went out and just went balls to the wall for like four or five minutes. In a mm-hmm. room. Um, I kind of think we might see something similar. Maybe not quite as good. Could be better. You know, I can I can see Bray Wyatt being a good four to five minute match wrestler. You know, yeah. I mean the spooky stuff's going to interfere with it, which is unfortunate. But if they just went out there and just had like crazy spots for four and a half minutes, I, I think it would be killer. I, yeah, I, I really do. Yeah, because the thing about the uh, lights out match, like the actual in ring wrestling stuff, was inoffensive enough. It was mm-hmm. you know, all the other stuff was kind of dumb, but like you know, and Lashley's better than L.A. Knight, so right. Maybe they'll do something here. I mean, it beats, you know, going for 20 minutes or whatever and having to be bad. That's the thing. They'll keep it short. <laughs> so hopefully. Yeah. Um, But yeah, we can uh, stick with SmackDown. You know, we spent a lot of time last week talking about when are they going to have Cody and Roman face off. Then the <laughs> next day on Raw, they just announced it'll be on SmackDown, <laughs> which fair. Um, Great segment. You know, I know uh, we enjoyed the first Cody and Heyman segment. The second one was kind of weird because Heyman was – you know, just on the Titan Tron and we're like, they have to do this at some point. And yeah, they both knocked it out of the park, man. Um, yeah, a lot of people are like, Oh, why does Cody have to bring dusty into all of his feuds? And that's fair. But also like, you have to remember the majority of people in the audience for WWE don't watch AEW. So, you know, doing this is still kind of new and fresh to them and, you know, right or wrong, WWE mostly acts like they don't exist. So this is all fresh you know, from that standpoint too. So like, I get it if you've watched AEW and you've seen Cody do this for the last three years, but for a lot of people that haven't, this is still really working for them. And then you have Roman coming in and being like, you know, he saw more in me than he saw in you. And yeah, I thought it was very good. Yeah, this was, this was an excellent segment. Just, just the, you know, I, I didn't love the content of the material, you know, the, all that much either, but the delivery, the, the, the way, especially Roman carried himself. Yeah. Um, and and just the it really felt like you were seeing the two biggest stars in wrestling. It mm-hmm. felt that way. The buzz in the crowd, whether or not Cody was getting booed some and Rome was getting cheered more, which is which kind of was the case in this segment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it didn't matter. It it felt like the WrestleMania main event 
it, it, it felt like the two biggest stars in wrestling. And that's that that's the overall feeling and, and atmosphere was the most important part. And it, it was just incredible stuff, man. Just like, you know, the presence of both guys, the face to face Cody's entrance hitting coming out and Roman smirk when he comes out, just yeah. the, the whole thing, the whole presentation was great. Um, again, you know, I didn't love the content either, but I think your argument's strong and 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 uh, and valid. And you know, I, I think ultimately, um, they they got to the point which was that you know, Cody is kind of kind of the underdog here, you know, mm-hmm. um, and any any you know made made that really great uh, last sort of. Um. Uh, you know, yelling promo at the end there. Yeah, but <clears throat> man, this was this was uh, this was great stuff, man. Like, um, this this made this made you want to see the match. Oh, absolutely. And the thing is, too, like they got I think about twenty five minutes or whatever for this. Like, it went for a long time. If you're gonna go for that long, and you're gonna you have to make sure it's a hit because something else from the show is probably gonna get you know cut a little bit as a result and. I think they did a great job with it. I don't know what they're going to do. They're probably going to do contract signing, um, you know, Mania Week. Um, and then, like I said, Roman's going to be at Raw in two weeks from tomorrow. He's advertised because I'm going to be there. Um, so I don't know what you really do with them from here or in that segment to kind of bridge the gap unless they just do the contract signing there, which would be fine too. But like, they really don't need to be around each other too much more until mania. No, they don't, they don't need to, they don't need to drain the well, uh, too much here. You know, the two more, you know, two more, uh, face to faces, you know, mm-hmm. are, uh, are fine. Um, three would be okay, but that'd be, be close to pushing it. Um, you, you, you can't do more than three. I mean, I know we look, we have a month left, so you got to do it a couple more times. Yeah. Um, there's but, uh, maybe like a Cody and Solo match coming. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. I'm with you there. Yeah. And I think, you know, elsewhere on SmackDown, like they did a good job kind of uh, furthering the paranoia with Roman too. So they're really, they're doing a good job. You know, obviously we're close to the finish line on this and it's just all a matter of if they can execute the finish properly, but there's nothing that leads you to believe that they can't. Right. And that's good. I, I, I think next week they probably have to do the Sammy and KO reunion. I don't know how much longer you can keep dragging that out, but uh, overall they're on the right track. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, then elsewhere on SmackDown, I think uh, Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan had a really good match. Um, mm-hmm. You know, We talked about how they're managing to keep Liv fresh, which after she lost the title, I know me and you and Joe had a conversation about, you know, is she just going to fall back or is she going to, still be a threat and they feel like they're kind of positioning her as a threat for, you know, money in the bank or queen in the ring or whatever. And that's good. That's what you got to do when people are away from mm-hmm. the title. Yeah. You know, Liv is, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge Liv fan, but mm-hmm. there's certain things she does so well. Like just, just that segment, you know, with a, with a girl that was crying when she lost yes. in the crowd and, you know, took her backstage. She's just a great ambassador. Someone who's great with, with, you know, with her fans. That's, that's what she's strongest as. And, and she's improving as a performer and as a wrestler. And that's the type of person, you know, you you want to sort of continue to push and, and, and keep strong on your TV. Mm-hmm. Um, man, Rhea Ripley something else, but just, just you know, makes me want to transition. Don Mysterio. <laughs> I mean, this guy, his promos suck. Mm-hmm. His in-ring work is not really good. But my God, he's an actual heat magnet, and he's not the he's not it's it's not X Pac heat. I know some will say they have X Pac heat with them, and that's fine, whatever. It's not this guy is a legitimate heel that people hate and want to see get his ass kicked. Yeah, and it rules, and he's the most yeah. over. He's the most true heel in the entire WWE. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing, and like Joe has talked about this too, like with Corbin. People wanted to boo him, but they spent like years saying, "Oh, you shouldn't boo him. He's a good wrestler." Dominic, they just let him lean into it. Yeah, and it's made all the difference. He's a ama- that segment on the ramp with Ray was incredible. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, he he steals the one, he rips the mask. What I mean, the heat for that was through the roof. It was amazing. It the was great forearmed Ray as he picks up the mask. Just incredible stuff, man. When they when Ray finally gets his hands on him, the place is going to explode. 
Just, just yeah. great, great, great stuff. Yeah, and Michael Cole did a great job selling. Oh yeah, he's awesome. Great work from Michael Cole this week. Um, all right. Anything else from Raw or SmackDown this week, or should we move into our segments here? Um, I'm trying to think. You know, uh, they're they're teasing the uh, Gunther uh, uh, challenger. Uh, yeah. They've got that five way, but Kofi's hurt, right? Yes, he is. Yeah, Brian Alvarez, I think, said Kofi was hurt, and that mm-hmm. may or may not have been confirmed. So I guess Xavier Woods yeah, is going to be in place. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I don't know. They, I don't know if they've made an announcement on that yet, but um, I still think they're going to do the triple threat. Um, yeah, I do too. You know, uh, they've they've already got the tension deal with with Sheamus and Drew with their promo, which I liked. Yeah. Um, got the oh, you know, of course, cut a promo. Um, so I, I think, I think, I think we're gonna get the triple threat. Uh, we've been predicting since the uh, sort of scramble with with uh, Brock and Bobby went through uh, the last couple mm-hmm. of weeks. So I, I do think we're gonna get Gunther, uh, Sheamus, and Drew for the IC belt still. Yeah. Uh, don't have an answer. Are they doing Ray against Dom or Ray and Santos against Priest and Dom? I think it's just gonna be Ray against Dom at this point. I know they're bringing you know Santos yeah. into it, but. The way they're setting it up, it's the beef is between Ray and Dom, and I think that's what you have to do. Like I know Dom's not the best worker, but you figure working with Ray, he'll be fine. Right, like, right, right. Yeah, and they can do. We can do. They can just. Like, they can really milk the drama with this because Dom's so over as a heel, and Ray's yeah. such a good baby face, and the story's so well done that it can just be a lot of like. It doesn't have to be a lot of like. Work rate stuff, you know. No, for sure. Um, all right. So, get into our segment here. We had a couple big house shows last night. I don't know which one uh, live event correspondent Joe Holbert picked to see if we'd buy a ticket for, but let's take a look. Go ahead, Joe. Good evening, folks. I'm back. Fed Dead Redemption once again. Would you buy a ticket? Um, quickly, I would like to note that I did see everyone's uh, critique and complaint um, about my sort of violent back and forth motion last week. Um, I have avoided that this time, I tried to anyway, with a Hulk Hogan-esque play of having my back to the wall. And we'll see if that helps. It should help on that front. I do fear it will limit my endurance slightly as I'm standing up, which, you know, maybe hurt the runtime. But nonetheless, we head this week, boys, to Toronto, Ontario, Canada, the Coca-Cola Coliseum, which sounds like real graps to me. Um, I've got a feeling I know the answer here, because this kind of got some hype. But nonetheless, let's get into this, go for it match by match. We start... With the SmackDown Women's title on the line. The Queen, Charlotte Flair, everyone loves the Queen, defending against Shayna Baszler. We then move to singles competition as Ridge Holland is up against Joaquin Wilde. Rhea Ripley up next, taking on Raquel Rodriguez, uh, Santos Escobar, opposite LA Knight. Uh, dummy, yeah, that one, yep, yeah. um, who stays in there, pulls double duty, and then enters a Toronto street fight with Kevin Owens. The Intercontinental title follows as Ricochet challenges Gunter. This develops into six-man competition as Braun Strowman, Drew McIntyre, and Ricochet take on Imperium. And finally, you guessed it, the sequel to one of the biggest WWE title matches in recent memory, Roman Reigns opposite Sami Zayn in Toronto. Big time business, brothers. Big time business. Hell of a house I hear too. So, Oracle, Bobby, would you buy a ticket? That sounds incredible. I'm going to be honest. Even without the Roman match, like there's so much there. Uh, Charlotte and Shayna could be good in the right setting. Um, you know, Rick Shane Gunther had a couple good matches on TV already. I would absolutely buy a ticket to that. Yeah, I would just just to be there. You know, amongst amongst a uh, hot Toronto crowd, I think would be the kind of big reason. And of course, Roman in the main event. You know, yeah. that, that would just be that would be worth the price alone for me. I think. Um, and and I, and I even see I even think something like Rhea and Raquel could be a really good like seven minute match because yeah. you know they're friends and I bet I bet they probably work pretty well together. Mm-hmm. So. In fact, yeah. I know they do because their matches in NXT were good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't want to, uh, you know, spoil Joe's segment, but I know that Garden House show, they got like a 20-man battle royal coming up too. So, like, that's good stuff, man. Hell yeah. Oh, man. 
All right. Uh, we can keep moving along here. We can go back to this week in WWE history. And I promise we're not just going to talk about 2001 every week, but we're back <laughs> in 2001 yet again. Uh, 20, uh, what, 22 years ago today. Yeah, that was uh, 2001. Um, Paul Heyman joined the WWF as the Raw color commentator because Jerry Lawler decided to side with uh, Stacey Carter instead of keeping his job, which would not last very long for him. But, uh, you know, he did that. Now Paul Heyman's here, and uh, it's a big time for WWF, big time for wrestling. Oracle uh, set the stage early March 2001 for us. Uh, yeah, I remember watching that Raw, and and uh, Paul Heyman was in the booth, and, and I didn't really have – I've been watching for – about a year, or, you know, or so, mm. a little bit over, and I and I kind of knew who he was, but I was like, huh, because um, I, I I recognized him because I watched like ECW on TNN, some of my dad, yeah, in the last months before you know before it got off TNN and Raw went on TNN, mm-hmm. and uh, so I was like, wow, that's weird. Um, Lawler was gone, of course, and and uh, yeah. Um, this was kind of the end of ECW, right? You know, uh, basically in a lot of ways. And uh, <clears throat> I guess, you know, well, I shouldn't say I guess. I, I think I said, I, I, I think I should say I am glad that Tommy Dreamer didn't commit a murder-suicide. Yeah, um, would have kind of ruined WrestleMania. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> boy, that Dreamer's something else, isn't he? Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, um, th- it, this was... This was a crazy time in wrestling. Um, I'll never forget watching the uh, Raw Nitro simulcast. Uh, you know, like uh, like three weeks after this, so mm-hmm. just a really crazy time as sort of every major wrestling promotion all was consolidated within WWE and kind of left us with not kind of really did just leave mm-hmm. us with a monopoly for close to 20 years so yeah um crazy. this was a the march 2001 was was a was an exciting but more so than anything probably a dark time in wrestling history yeah and honestly yeah, this, is- this was the beginning of in my and in my mind the worst thing that ever happened in the history of wrestling which was uh ecw and wcw folding um yeah it was very 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 bad for the business um but yeah this was uh it was it was certainly a crazy time. Yeah, and this is kind of like, you know, because ECW hadn't run a show in, I think, like January they ran one. And then they were supposed to do Living Dangerously at the beginning of March, but everyone kind of figured it was getting canceled. And then like three days before, you know, Paul Heyman showed up on Raw. So writing was kind of on the wall there. Um, you know, good for Heyman. He's turned it into a whole, you know, second, third run, I guess, if you count as WCW and then right. ECW. And now he's been kind of a mainstay of the WWF for uh, – 20 years now so worked out for him i mean yeah (laughs) okay um i guess we can take another look at our wrestlemania card here not a ton of changes this week um you know roman and cody's locked in i Uh, i I do want to uh real quick uh this is this is related to our card kirby uh asked this before we got to our um uh would you buy a ticket segment so are there uh are they setting up a three with carmella for the Raw Women's Title at Mania, or did they or just a match against Bianca for Monday? I hope it's just Bianca and Oscar. And look, I actually think Carmella is pretty decent in the ring. I really do. In fact, I kind of think she might even be better than Liv in the ring. Yeah. Um, but and that's like a country because like I know com- people kind of compare her and Liv mm. for various reasons, some unfair and 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 some fair. Um, but I think this is just a. This is just a match on Raw. It's got to just be Bianca and Asuka. Uh, Carmella cannot yeah. be involved in that at all. That would be that would be bad. Yeah, and I mean, I like Carmella, but these two have wrestled so much. Like, mm-hmm. and I know it's TV. You're just filling time, and it you know it is what it is. But like, man, Bianca probably could have just wrestled someone else here. Yeah, yeah, I'm but, with you. <laughs> you know, I'm with you. It's um, fine. Though. It is what it is. But yeah, uh, which which you know, kind of makes you transition. Yeah. I, I think it's going to stay Bianca and Oscar. So we've got Roman Cody, Bianca, Oscar, and, and Rhea Charlotte is kind of the big three matches. Yeah. So Rhea Charlotte's locked in. Um, uh, Zane and Owens against the Usos. It's basically locked in. So it's four, uh, Brock and Omos, 
Lashley and Bray at six, uh, Seth Rollins and Logan Paul. Did you like that segment, Seth Rollins on the uh, Miz TV? <sighs> no. Um, <laughs> I appreciate they tried to make sort of a creative way with it, but Seth is just so cringe to me. Yeah. The way he said, like, bye-bye, bitch, I was like, oh, God, can I not watch this guy ever again, please? <laughs> um, yeah. Um. So we think, where are we? Where do we land for the women's tag stuff? Or are we still just leaving that off the board for now? Do we are we are we totally confident in the split, or, or do we want to wait? Yeah, we should probably wait. So we'll yeah. leave that one off the board for now. Um, Theory and Cena is probably going to be set up tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to be for the U.S. title. Um, you're kind of out of time to get it off of Theory at this point. I guess you're not, but like he won the Elimination Chamber, so you would have mm-hmm. just got it off of him there instead. So I don't really know why it would be for the U.S. title, um, but I know it's the first title Cena won or whatever, so you could play back to that. But That would be eight. Are, are we confident in locking that in for now? The match itself, yes. I don't okay. necessarily know if it's going to be for the title, but yeah, so it's eight. What about um, the IT triple threat? Would you be confident in locking that in? Yes. Okay. So that's nine. Um, Ray and Dominic in the singles match, I think we're both pretty confident with. Finn so and 10. Edge. Finn and Edge. It's 11. Um, what else do we have? Because we got to get to probably about 14 or 16. Obviously, yeah. the two women's matches that we aren't sure of yet right. will play into it. Um, hmm. What else is there? Gonna be missing I like, something. I feel like we're missing something too. Um, Don't have an answer. Does Gargano get a match? See, if you if you end up uh, switching the U.S. title, then yeah, he'll probably be in like a multi-man match for that. But other right. than that, probably not. I mean, again, we talked about a little bit last week, like that thing that not everyone's gonna make it on the Mania card at least, and it's two nights, so it's like you know, it feels like they should, but also. None of these matches feel it's not a bunch of part timers. It's not a bunch of like these are forced matches. Like everything's kind of been set up, and some people just don't have a spot. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I try and find somewhere for LA Knight. I think he's done a good job, but he was Andre, really over on SmackDown. He was. Uh, the Andre would probably stay on SmackDown the mm-hmm. night before. It's kind of what they've been doing. I, you could just put it on the pre show again. This still not having any pre show matches thing is weird. Um, like it's actively bad when you're actually at the event because there's nothing going on. But like it's it's weird when you're at home because I don't know. I didn't mm-hmm. always watch it, but like I'm not gonna sit there and watch the panel for two hours. Right, right. It's not so bad when it's like just the B pay per views or whatever. Um, I guess I guess the Mania pre show is only gonna be one hour because it's two nights, so I'll just do one hour yeah. for, for, for each night. But that's fair. Um, uh, I don't know. This feels like it. Like with those two women's matches, this feels like thirteen. They might add one more, and they're seven and seven for each night. I think that'd be good. I like that. I, I think that probably will be it. Um, they might add one more. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know what the I don't know what that will be. Um, I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't know what. No, I don't think we are though. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Could just be a seven and a six. You know. Oh, uh, Seth and Logan. No, we talked about Seth. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, we, we yeah, yeah we, I, that was in our thing. So, um, do you think? It's kind of weird that they haven't announced anyone for the Hall of Fame yet. Do you think it's just because it's after SmackDown now? They don't have to sell tickets to it. They can just kind of announce it the week you know, over. That, that that definitely might be the case. Um, yeah, a Hall of Fame's kind of it's not as big as it was. You know, I, yeah. I think I think they kind of COVID happened, and also the one where Brett got attacked by a fan. I think kind yes. of you know. Uh, <laughs> change their sort of uh, uh, thought process on that. Um, mm-hmm. Worth worth noting, Miz is going to be the host of WrestleMania. Uh, yeah, that'll be fun. That was announced recently on Raw, I think. So he's good at that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Donovan Manette says, "What about Solo? That's a good one. I would want to get him on the card somewhere. I just don't know necessarily where you put him." Um, I don't know. Like, it could be a fatal four-way for the Intercontinental title, I guess, and that would be fun because all four of those guys rule, but, like, he'd be yeah. kind of forced in at this point. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There just might not be a spot for him. Uh, he'll be on the show involved in some way. But oh, yeah. I, I don't know if he's necessarily going to be in the ring. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, from when it's like, if I had to guess, and I think Roman's going to take some time off after Mania, I think that Solo's going to stay with Roman whenever Roman comes back, and the Usos are going to be, you know, doing their own thing separately. So whether that leads to a tag match between the four of them or whatever uh, remains to be seen, but I think that's really interesting way you can do it because at some point and that way you know solo can do more uh, stuff on his own while roman's not there and then kind of get built up even more so that's the thing with a lot of these people missing mania like i think they're still due for big stuff over the spring and the summer just because you know there's a reason to be optimistic now that because mm-hmm. it feels like i know he's been in charge for nine months but like this feels like triple h can finally get his pieces where he wants to and just kind of have because the year's always been you know mania to mania right Right. Like historically. So that's the WWE year. That's the yeah. WWE calendar. Is Mania to Mania. So yeah. So the first, you know, few months he was bringing his people back and tying up loose ends and all that. And this kind of feels like this is his first chance to really do what he's going to do after Mania. It feels like there's going to be a draft sooner rather than later. Um, yeah. You would think. So yeah, it's going to be interesting because everyone not making the card, like we talked about last week, isn't a huge deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and there's, they've got such a thing now where they make their summers these jam packed things because like they've got the three summer shows they've already announced now they've got, mm-hmm. um, what is it King and Queen of the what's uh, I just rather just call it, I don't know just call it King in the Ring yeah King and Queen's just an annoying thing to say mm-hmm. um, but yeah I mean they have those yeah I mean, uh, they, they've got that that's a Saudi show right yeah. Same weekend, uh, money, double or nothing. Yeah. That's a stadium. Money in the Bank's a stadium. Summer yeah, Money in the Bank's stadium. London. Uh, and um, then uh, that's so Wembley, right? Um, or, or is that just O2? I know SmackDown's at O2. I don't... Where is it? Is, is London Wembley? Um, I feel like it's not Wembley, but it's one of the other outside ones. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Money in the Bank's at 2 that's not a stadium, but it's a okay, yeah. big show, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, uh, Detroit is um, SummerSlam then, Field. So, yeah. Yeah, and SummerSlam being early again leads me to believe that they're going to do, you know, Labor Day weekend show again, which it won't be in England mm-hmm. again, I don't think. But, like, they'll do yeah. one, and that'll probably be a stadium as well. So and, and a lot I of guess, opportunities if you don't. And then I'm guessing, I think Backlash is, like, May 6th. They just haven't announced it yet. Yeah, which is strange. Yeah. But yeah, that's how they used to do it, though. They announced the paper. Apparently, like apparently they took the WrestleMania tag off. Oh, shit. Uh oh. We lost Oracle. But that's okay. Oh, we good? Am I here? Am I back? Yeah, now you're good. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've 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 disappeared. Luckily, I disappeared when Joe was was on, and that wasn't so bad then. Mm. Um, I also disappeared when Bobby was on a spiel, so that was also good. But this is the first time I vanished when I was talking. I was just saying, uh, I think they took the WrestleMania tagline off of Backlash, and it's just Backlash now. They did, yeah. Okay, that's good. That because the WrestleMania Backlash thing was stupid. Yeah, uh, Cody says, "I wish Money in the Bank would go back to being Mania matches." I agree. Um, <clears throat> Or if you're going to do it in the summer, have it be for like a SummerSlam um, match. I don't think the concept is good enough as oh. it is anymore. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. We lost Oracle again, but that's fine. We're we good. Back? I am back. No. I am back for now. Okay. <laughs> I was just about to say it's time to yeah. do our, it's time to five, our, our, our Fed Five. It is. We uh, we don't have a C-show report this week because I didn't see main event. Uh, I know, I think it was, um, what's his name, Malik Blade and the guy that got the WWE tattoo that ended up not being a real tattoo. They faced the hurt business. So, I mean, whatever. Check that out if you want to. Right. Um, um, I'll probably, we'll if, if, if Mako and, uh, if Mako and uh, um, Roxanne is, is Roxanne. really good, I'll probably talk about it. Yeah, it doesn't look like a bad show. Like that and uh Jin or uh Braun and the Creeds against Jinder and his guys should be fun. Yeah. Um, all right, yeah, we could do the Fed five here real quick. And do you wanna collaborate this week or do you wanna do them separately since there were actually more than five uh good performances? We're not gonna struggle as much as we did last week, I don't think. 
we can uh, we can we can we can collaborate. Okay. I think we can still um, do that. I think Cody needs to be on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gable. Okay. Yeah. I like that match a lot. Um, Rhea Ripley. Yeah. Got two more spots here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Roman because I thought I thought he you know did so well. Um, yep. Just being paranoid and just a promo and the way he carried himself in that segment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Dom's such a good heel, but I you know Michael Cole like you m- m- mentioned in the DMs is so great I on did. commentary during that he was great. Yeah, you want to put Michael Cole on there? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's put Michael Cole on there. All right. So you got Cody Rhodes, Chad Gable, Roman Reigns, Rhea Ripley, and Michael Cole as your Fed Five this week. Hell yeah. Good stuff. Um, believe that is about it for us. Let's see if anything else that we didn't touch on here, but uh, I know got a lot going on tonight. So, you know. Um, yeah. You got anything to plug or anything like that? Uh, not too much. Um, at some point here, either next Tuesday or the Tuesday after, uh, we're going to be back doing Oracle or the, uh, the historical Oracle. Uh, it's either going to be this coming Tuesday or the next, um, for August of 19 of August of 1996. Hell yeah. Um, of course, you know, the flagship will be back next week, Thursday night, uh, mm-hmm. talk about ring of honor, uh, and, uh, so on and so forth. Um, the uh, the Fleet Boys will be here at five o'clock. They will be here in just under an hour to preview uh, the big the uh, the big event tonight. Um, I woke up closer to noon today, which I'm glad because this pay per view will not be over till probably shortly after midnight. Yeah. So uh, it's not so bad for me. I don't have to get up till eleven a.m. for work, but um, it's just you know I was I was afraid. I'm glad I slept because I woke up at nine yesterday, but um, if I'd woken up at like eight or nine today, I think I would have been struggling some, but yeah. uh, I feel you. Know. you. I'm i uh, I'm making a lasagna for the show. So figured that would pop you. I'm going to have leftover lasagna uh, I had yeah. some on Friday night. So I'm going to have some. There it is. That, that rules. Um, cool. Yeah. Like Oracle said, fleet week uh, is going to be at the top of the hour. I have vanished. I have died. Either I've died or Bobby's died. Can y'all hear me? Can the chat hear me? Okay. I think we're back. Okay, we're yeah. Good. I don't know. I, I feel like it was me who died. but No, that time it was me. Um, okay. Okay. Fleet Week at the top of the hour. Um, if you're in the chat for that show, please let Joe Holbert know that they're going to do a Buried Alive match with Christian and Jungle Boy tonight in case he has <laughs> not heard since he uh, he had a lot of problems with that suggestion on Thursday and then they immediately announced it on Friday. Pump my fist. That should be great. Um, flagship is back Thursday. I don't know that there's going to be too much in between that, but I'm sure that on Fleet Week they will plug whatever else is going on. Um But yeah, in the meantime, uh, that's all for us. We had a fun time. Hope you enjoyed it and enjoy this outro that I can never find. Yep, there we go. I'll just keep waving my hand until you're ready. Thanks, pal.